after this, Katz then goes to the States under a number of sort of different aliases. What does he do there? Well, several things. He On the East Coast, I think he's got a finger in several um, publishing pies, but his big thing in, in America was to go to Hollywood, uh, in effect to set up the what became the Hollywood Anti-Nazi League, which was a, a, a front, uh, mm. a Stalinist front. Uh, ostensibly, they were um, people urged stars, mm. directors were uh, urged to give money um, to either to help fight the Spanish Civil War or to uh, contribute to the general struggle against fascism. Hollywood, mm. of course, was populated by many people who were refugees from Germany. Most of the German film industry was in, in, in Hollywood. Um, and also all the studios were run by Jews. Mm. So the appeal, the cats... This is a strong um, motivation. Cats really appeared, apparently he was fantastic, a kind of star in front of the stars, mm. performing to, uh, to people at these glitzy dinners, um, raising enormous amounts of money. Um, and he called himself Rudolf Breda, anti-Nazi um, freedom fighter, and uh, as such inspired, uh, I think, many Hollywood uh, films. Lillian Hellman wrote mm. uh, her famous play Watch on the Rhine, based the lead character in that is based very heavily on, on uh, Otto Katz and that became a, an Academy Award winning film. And also there's, uh, there is an argument for saying that although uh, Victor Laszlo in Casablanca is mm. not based on Katz, the, the personage of, uh, mm. of Laszlo does, uh, I mean Katz stands behind that personage mm. uh, or certainly Informs Katz it. playing Rudolf Breda, pretending to be a Nazi freedom fighter, stands behind it. Um, why did he take on another name? It's not something you do these days, is it? Because somebody uh, would say, you know, <laughs> this man is actually called something else. Yes. Well, before internet, before everything, much easier to change identities. He was, he was a comedian. I mean, he had about 20 different uh, uh, pseudonyms. and. Uh, People who knew him, I mean, it did become confusing even in his day. Mm. People who'd met him as cats, knew him as a Breda, and knew him, but usually they they understood the reason for the... Uh, yeah, they the, understood the it to be a cover yeah. name of some kind. Yeah. And he returns to Spain in time for the Civil War. What was his role there? Difficult to determine. At, at first it was a propaganda role. He was in charge of, uh, of the anti-Nazi propaganda in... Uh, Spain, but it also, if you look deeper, it becomes clear that he played a more sinister role, mm. that um, there was a lot of, I mean, Stalin played a, a very nasty role in the Spanish Civil War, uh, liquidating uh, people that he wanted, it was a great pretext for a kind yeah. of Stalinist approach. Liquidating the opposition from the left. Exactly, and uh, th th there's some evidence that Katz indeed participated in that, acted as a kind of messenger boy, uh, helped select people. Um, to be uh, not, to be murdered, mm. um, so this was a kind of notch up for him. Mm. Uh, he was moving into a different, a more desperate kind of um, activity. And how do you think he felt about those changes? <sighs> Very difficult to say, except that he was uh, a kind of come hell or high water. He was a party man, which yes. is why I think and never he was able from it. to turn on Munzenberg. Yes. Uh, Katz was married, of course, by this time to Ilse, who, uh, who, who went with him on many of his journeys and was sort of hand, you know, they, they were very close. And I think they both were very strongly committed to the party. Mm. And as a result, uh, that was part of his duty. And one of the big changes that happens is the shift in Stalin's attitude to the common turn. And yes. Uh, what happens as a result of that, and what happens to Willy Munzenberg? Well, the immediate result of that, in terms of Katz and Munzenberg, is, Ka uh, is Munzenberg's frozen out. Yes. Um, and, and Katz, in some ways, takes over. And Katz, indeed, absolutely, he takes over. And I think, with always his eye on an opportunity, mm. is uh, you know, is happy to do that. Mm. Uh, so, of the circle of people that were assembled to do the Brown Book of Hitler Terror in Paris in, in 33, uh, Katz becomes the kind of main turncoat. He mm. becomes the person who uh, kind of shits on Hansenberg and all the others were appalled. Uh, a few of them did understand the logic in terms of mm. the party of what he was doing. And then there's a theory that he had a hand in Munzenberg's death. Early in the war, Munzenberg escaped from his internment camp in mm. southern France 
and was found hanged in a wood um, about six months after uh, after his death. So his body was rotting and decomposing. Mm. Um, nobody's ever established who did it. The theories are perhaps the fascists, perhaps the communists. Uh, Katz by that time was in America, mm. uh, so he couldn't have had a direct hand in it, but he could have had in some organizational way mm. a, a, a hand in it. And certainly these were the years when Stalin was organizing assassinations in, you know, Trotsky in, in Europe. Colossal. I mean, just yeah. the you know the number of people, the number of Russians, the number of communists that Stalin mm. killed is is uh, mind-boggling. And what was Otto Katz doing for the remainder of the war? For the war, he was um, he was down in Mexico in Mexico City uh, with a band of um, German refugees. Uh, it seems like he was leading a fairly quiet life, and in some ways he was, but he was uh, very heavily engaged in trade unionism in, in Mexico and um, made voyages to uh, Argentina, to Cuba, and I think he was uh, definitely sowing the seeds of uh, post-war communist uh, invasion, as it were. And when Czechoslovakia became communist with Soviet assistance at the end of World War II, what, what was Katz's reward for this lifetime of loyalty to...? Well, Katz went home hoping to be, I suppose, the grand old man of the Communist Party in, in, uh, in Prague. Uh, he immediately became the uh, editor, foreign editor and then I think the chief editor of Rude Pravo, which was mm. the main communist uh, paper. Uh, but very quickly, very, very quickly after uh, Gottwald came to power, he noticed a kind of chill in the air and several of his friends, people who fought in the uh, Spanish Civil War, uh, were arrested and incarcerated, mm. uh, some of them for between a year and 18 months. Uh, and these were the people who were later grouped together and um, brought to trial in the, what was called the Slansky trial. Katz uh, was one of them, he was one of the last to be arrested. Um, but he, like uh, most of the others, was hanged uh, in 1952. Uh, not for many of the crimes that he had committed, but mm. for crimes that he hadn't committed, but that Stalin wanted to get rid of these people, purge these people. Stalin loved to get rid of people who um, knew too much, who'd been around too long. Mm. And, of course, uh, Katz had decades, decades of... Um, Katz had an almost Zelig-like existence, didn't he, appearing sort of in the edge of the photograph. At, yes. At almost, almost every major event. Yes, I mean, period. you trace, as, as I was saying at the, at the beginning, you can trace almost a history of the first half of the 20th century through mm. Katz's uh, life. He was where the action was all the time. Mm. And he's... Part of what is now probably unlikely to, to be there again, it's something that combines kind of political activism and spying in a way that the Comintern was kind of almost unique in, do you think, in that way of approaching things? Well, in, yes, in as much as, uh, as spying was a legitimate extension of the Comintern activity, if you want. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to say. I, I, I mean, it probably happens in a different guise today. Mm. Maybe, you know, I mean, you think of the Foreign Office or something. Mm. It's, uh, um, it's combining this very public existence yes. with this very secret, private existence. And I, I, it's, I, can't, I can't think of another example where, where this occurs. Well, certainly, Katz is one of the most flashy and showy of spies. I mean, he's, he's, he's almost James Bond-like, and, you know, if you take him back mm. a couple of decades. Um, but he has got that extrovert quality, which of course is a marvellous thing to hide behind. What are you working on now? Uh, what I'm working on now, actually, is at this very moment, is a demo for a musical theatre piece on the Katz Dietrich um, love story. And what stage is that at? Well, it's in demo right now. We, we just recorded the second session. Uh, we'll be recording the third session in September and then we hope to get it workshopped and... Uh, and then go and raise some money too? Yes. And where would you like to see that premiere? Well, there are several possibilities. The States is one, uh, Europe is another, but of course if there was anybody interested in England it would be lovely. Jonathan, thanks for talking to me today. Thank you.